We are glad to welcome you to the channel Life Stories of Destinies. Please subscribe to our channel and click on the bell. Well, here we go. Do you truly believe there's a place for you here? My mother-in-law's words sliced through the air as we sat in the restaurant, the aroma of the lavish meal before us tainted by her disdain. They're just a daughter-in-law, not blood, she added, a smirk playing on her lips, her hand waving dismissively, a gesture that felt like an invitation to leave. Anger coursed through me, making my hands tremble as I pushed back my chair to stand. But before I could exit the room, she halted me with a raised hand. Wait, what about the bill? If you're leaving early, leave the money, she demanded, a smug expression on her face. I met her gaze with a defiant smile. Why would I pay for a stranger's bill? I retorted. My name is Maya, a 28-year-old office worker. My husband, Terrell, and I are content in our relationship, except for one persistent problem, my overbearing mother-in-law. Living in close proximity to her, she invaded our lives, criticizing my cooking and homemaking skills. Uninvited, she'd barge in, pointing out every flaw, all while pretending to be a concerned mother. When I complained to Terrell, he didn't believe me. In his eyes, his mother was just a loving parent, blind to her manipulations. As time passed, her intrusions grew worse. Armed with a key my husband had given her, she'd enter our home, criticizing and complaining about everything. She even tarnished my reputation with the neighbors, spreading lies about me. I pleaded with Terrell to move away, but he remained indifferent, busy with work. Then, a turning point arrived. His successful project led to a promotion and a significant salary increase. Seizing the opportunity, I suggested expanding our family. Now that our income had grown, perhaps it was time to think about having children. I proposed, hoping this positive change might finally open his eyes to the toxic presence of his mother. I thought it was a good idea, but if we're considering having children, I prefer to live in a more child-friendly town. There are very few childcare centers here, and there are no parks for children to play in. Isn't it time for us to move? Finally, my husband gave a positive response about moving, and I was happier about this than the news of his promotion. However, that feeling didn't last long. The next day, my mother-in-law came over as usual without any notice. I was fed up, assuming she had come to nag again, but something seemed different this time. I've decided to celebrate my son's promotion, so I've reserved a restaurant. It's a very expensive place, but it's elegant. The food is top-notch and the staff's attitude is wonderful. It has a great word-of-mouth reputation, she said, inviting me to join. That's nice, good for you, I replied, trying to be polite, although I was as unfriendly as ever. Well, never mind. I want you to come to this restaurant, too. Please come, she insisted. I'll check my schedule, but it's probably impossible, I added. Don't say that. We'll be waiting for you, she insisted. Even though I answered that way, she just smirked and left. Until now, she had been excluding me, but now she was inviting me and saying she'd wait. There must be something going on. When I asked my husband when he got home, he said he had already told his mother that we would go together. She had reserved that restaurant for us, and he was looking forward to it. Do you feel the same? Why don't you, Maya? He asked. Sorry, but I'm not looking forward to it. I don't know how much money it will cost at such an expensive place. I don't want to go. Just say I have urgent business and enjoy yourself. I replied, feeling apprehensive about the situation. Why are you thinking so negatively? Besides, it's not just us going to the restaurant. My brothers are bringing their wives, too. It would be bad if you didn't come with the whole family, my husband insisted excited about going to a fancy restaurant for the first time. Even though I didn't want to, I felt compelled to comply. My words no longer reached my husband. If he believed my mother-in-law more than me, I decided to record her harassment with a voice recorder I bought online. She was probably planning to harass me at the celebration, too. I would record her voice and play it for my husband. If he still defended her, I would divorce him. With that decision, I felt a bit better. Still, the day to meet my mother-in-law at the restaurant was depressing, and I kept sighing. I hardly knew my husband's brothers, having only met them at the wedding, and I had no memory of talking to their wives beyond greetings. When we arrived at the restaurant, the waiter led us to a large room where my mother-in-law, the other son and his wife, and the third son and his wife were already seated. 
The lavish spread adorned the table with just one vacant seat. My husband, puzzled, tilted his head in confusion. Did the waiter make a mistake with the number of seats? He wondered aloud. I'll go ask. Start eating, he said, leaving the room. The moment he stepped out, my mother-in-law stood up, her expression twisted into a sneer. There's no seat for you. Why should I invite a stranger who just married my son to a family celebration? She said, her tongue dripping with disdain. So I'll give you a choice. Show your sincerity and be accepted as family. Or leave and never show your face to me again. Choose now. I'm leaving, I answered without hesitation. My mother-in-law was momentarily flustered. Did she think I would beg her to recognize me as family in this situation? No way. Listen to the end. If you pay the entire bill here, I'll recognize you as Terrell's wife. You must be frustrated being treated as a stranger. So pay up and become family, she demanded. I told you I'm leaving. Why should I pay for someone else's family's bill? I retorted, turning my back on her. Mother-in-law slammed the table and shouted, Don't you get it? I'm offering to make you family. Are you okay with being a stranger? Pay up now. I'm fine being a stranger. Since I'm a stranger, I won't pay for your meal. Goodbye, mother-in-law, I said, and I left. She chased after me, but by the time she reached the entrance of the room, I was already at the exit of the restaurant. When I got home thinking I'd email my husband, he returned within 15 minutes. The waiter said the reservation number wasn't wrong, and my mom was causing a scene, he said. It seemed like my declaration that I was fine being a stranger had also said something in the eldest son's wife and the third son's wife. They had previously fought, enduring harassment silently was the only option. But seeing me talk back made them realize they could do it too. In their momentum, both of them left, and our husbands, the eldest and third sons, hurriedly followed suit. I had braced myself for complaints from my mother-in-law, and sure enough, within three hours, the phone started ringing incessantly. It was so disruptive that I eventually blocked the calls. However, one call managed to get through from an unknown number. Hello, sorry for calling so late. Is this Maya's mobile phone? The man on the other end identified himself as a police officer from the nearby police station. He informed me that after being left alone, my mother-in-law had tried to eat what she could and subsequently attempted to make me foot the bill. Later on, however, the restaurant staff, already disapproving of my mother-in-law after the earlier disturbance, declined her request. They believed I wouldn't return to pay after leaving in anger. Ignoring all her calls, my mother-in-law was then suggested to pay by card, but she lacked a credit card and hadn't brought enough cash to cover everyone's meals. In a desperate bid, she tried contacting other family members to cover the costs, but no one responded. Frustrated and cornered, she started yelling, blaming me entirely for the situation. Her anger escalated, leading to a scene where she damaged expensive vases and flower pots at the restaurant. This chaos prompted the restaurant to call the police. The responding officers managed to calm down my furious mother-in-law, but she adamantly refused to accept any wrongdoing. The restaurant not only went unpaid, but also was burdened with a troublesome customer. They sought help to escort her home. Feeling guilty about ignoring a call from the police, my husband and I reluctantly returned to the restaurant. Upon our arrival, my mother-in-law was being pacified by the police. The moment she spotted me, she raised her eyes and crossing her arms, screamed, You're good for nothing! This situation happened because you didn't pay the bill. It's natural to help your mother, isn't it? Pay up now! I was utterly astonished when my mother-in-law uttered something almost threatening. Even with the police present, they had clearly stated that if no one took her home, they would either escort her to her in-law's house in a patrol car or arrest her for dining and dashing. Please take her away, arrest her, or whatever it takes. Just make her take responsibility, I said, my voice cold and resolute. Mother-in-law's eyes widened in shock at my words. How could you say something so cold? I can't believe it. Just pay up. It's bad luck to have a family member arrested, she pleaded. I don't care. I'm not family, and I don't want to get close to someone who's talking crazy and causing a scene, I replied, attempting to leave the restaurant and let the police handle the situation. However, my husband, who had remained silent all along, glared at me. I understand that what was said and done to Maya was terrible, but is it something bad enough to be arrested for? He questioned, defending his mother. You're missing the point. 
She's in trouble with the police because she dined and dashed and caused a scene at the restaurant. I have nothing to do with it. Or are you saying that I'm the one at fault for not paying for six people's meals even though I didn't eat? I retorted. My husband fell silent but walked past me toward the police and the restaurant staff. I knew what he intended to do. Anticipating his actions, I called out to his retreating back. If you're going to pay for her meal and compensate them, we're getting divorced. Think about that. My husband didn't respond to my words and silently took out his wallet. I sighed and left the restaurant, walking the familiar road back home. I started packing my essential belongings, preparing to leave. Just before the date changed, my husband finally returned. Mom's not getting arrested. It seems she was really in the wrong. But the restaurant said they'd forgive her if I compensated them and promised she'd never come back. I didn't have nearly enough money, so I had my brothers come and help. Oh, I'm so tired, he explained, his voice weary. He continued rambling about what happened after I left, seemingly annoyed by my lack of reaction. Then he approached me, noticing my packed bags. Hey, what's with these bags? He asked, puzzled. I'm preparing to leave the house because we're getting divorced. I told you that if you defended her... We'd get divorced. You're not going to say you didn't hear me, are you? I replied firmly. My husband looked down at me, his eyes wide with astonishment. Then he raised his gaze and began to yell. What's going on? Today you've been acting strange all day. I understand that mom did something terrible, but why do we have to get divorced? I've told you I'm being harassed, asked, and even with evidence and other people's testimony, you still choose your mother who was almost arrested over me. Is it strange that I want to divorce someone like that? I've had enough, I said. My husband continued to say various things, but it all went in one ear and out the other. I prepared to leave the house and made preparations for divorce. The next morning, I immediately went to get the divorce papers. When I signed and handed them to my husband, he made a big fuss about not wanting to divorce. However, when I mentioned involving a lawyer, he reluctantly signed, and I submitted the papers right away. Finally, I was able to return to being a stranger. Afterward, my husband moved out of the house and went to live with his parents. Apparently, he had relied on me for most of the housework, so he couldn't manage it himself. As a result, the house became a mess. Disliking the dirty house, he canceled the apartment lease and decided to return to his parents' home. Additionally, the eldest and third sons faced similar outcomes. On the day when my husband called his brothers to help with the compensation, they each had a big fight with their wives. The wives protested that they didn't want to pay for something that was their mother's fault, but the brothers used their savings to assist their mother without consulting them. Moreover, the brothers believed mother-in-law's words, thinking they might get arrested because of their unreasonable wives. Their love cooled at the sight of them belittling, and they were immediately confronted with the prospect of divorce. Both of them returned to their parents' homes, refusing to do housework. In the end, mother-in-law and her three childlike brothers also returned to the in-law's house. Thanks to the situation, they became a subject of mockery among the neighbors, who spread the word that all the brothers were abandoned by their wives. Mother-in-law dismissed these rumors as nonsense, passionately defending her sons and blaming their wives for their failures. The husbands, hearing the story, smugly nodded, convinced that divorcing them was the right decision. However, my relationship with the neighbors remained decent, and nobody believed these tales. They were aware of mother-in-law's nasty personality and kept their distance, quietly laughing at her. Mother-in-law became known as a failed mother who couldn't educate her sons, while the husbands gained a reputation in the neighborhood as mama's boys who defended their mother instead of protecting their wives. Despite the furious attempts of mother-in-law and the husband to contact me, I had changed all my contact information and moved to a new house. In the end, they couldn't find us, and they lived their lives constantly complaining. Since I'm no longer involved with mother-in-law and the others, my days have become enjoyable. Being free from the stress of dealing with her is a significant relief, and making new friends has also been wonderful. In fact, during the divorce process, I bonded with the ex-wives of the eldest and third sons over our shared grievances about mother-in-law. Now we often go out for meals and enjoy shopping on weekends. Given me such wonderful friends, I might even have to thank my ex-husband.
The day after tomorrow, we're all planning to visit a new cafe. From now on, we can do what we want. It might sound obvious, but it feels more liberating than ever before. I want to lead my own life without getting involved with such toxic people. And I am genuinely grateful for the friendships I found. I believe I would still be living alone if it weren't for them. The reason I'm not lonely now and the reason I can live happily is all thanks to them. I'm truly thankful and I hope this relationship continues forever.